And if you can make any sort of sense of what's going on here, I've got all my old bearings lined up. And we're putting in the new ones one by one, making sure that we keep this clear of oil. And maintain cleanliness. And uh, get everything put in. We're going to put a layer of uh, assembly lube on it before we get it all together. We're going to get our O-rings put in. And get a nice layer of RTV around the recommended areas and get these babies sandwiched together and screwed down. You want to use brand new seals. These keep water from water jackets from coming through here. So you want to make sure you use new seals. You don't want to use this old scaly one. Crankshaft is in block one and three. And right now we're going to RTV all around and then put block 2-4 right on top and bolt her down. Alright, here we have the two block halves together. What's next is pistons going in. Yeah, except for the fact that I am missing a... Oi! I am missing one screw and it goes right there. Right there. And don't know what happened to it. So we're going to go to the Subaru dealership tomorrow. And we're going to try and find that screw. And uh, that will be the last thing. Hopefully uh, not having that one didn't cause some kind of weird torque issue. And I don't wind up with a terrible seal on the block. But everything else seems to be pretty good. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Alright guys, so uh, what we're going to do now is install all the pistons into their proper cylinders. We want to make sure that we keep cleanliness. Uh, we don't put any dirt inside the cylinders. Uh, we want all the pistons to go back into their original spots. And then you want to make sure that your rings are oriented properly. You want your ring number two to be oriented 100%. The gap to be oriented 100% uh, opposite of the ring one gap. And then you want that uh, your oil seal ring at about 270. And then on the other side you have your, your stop ring and your top ring of the oil seal. Now we're going to just go ahead and use a gratuitous amount of lube and we're going to lube up the cylinder just get a nice coating all over the walls of the cylinder because this is the last time that we're gonna see it for a while hopefully and now this is just a Lucas brand assembly lube everybody's got their own flavor this stuff happens to be green but the important part is it's got a very high viscosity. It's a very sticky oil and it stays put so that when you're assembling your motor you don't uh, have something like engine oil that kind of just like seeps everywhere. And we want to make sure that, oops, well, that we keep the right piston that we're working with. We want our rings to have oil on them so I'm just gonna Put a little bit of oil on there and rub it in and then I'm going to replace my uh, my rings to make sure they're in the proper orientation. Okay so you can see I've got plenty of oil all around that. Kind of wipe off the surface of that piston which takes forever to clean. Get my gaps back and then I'm just going to go ahead and set this down like this and grab my ring compressor. Now the ring compressor is a nifty little tool. We're just going to set this down like this. Grab a little tightening tool. And tighten her down just a little bit. Now this does exactly what it sounds like. It compresses the rings on the piston so that we can then get that pushed into cylinder. So what we're going to do is let the skirt stick out a little bit. A little dot right in there 
denotes that's the front of the cylinder. So we're just gonna set this right in there like that. And we're gonna tap the cylinder in. Scratch up these heads real good. That pin is angled right there. All right, uh, generally you're not supposed to let screws pull stuff in. Put the tips together. <laughs> Apparently you can be pretty liberal with the amount of this stuff that you put on there. Almost looks like we know what we're doing. A. B. C. Y and Z, 22 foot pounds. All right, we're gonna torque it to 51 foot pounds, alphabetical sequence. 51, that was A. Yep, we are now going to take them in reverse order down 180 degrees. That's about right. That feels really loose now. That first set was to stretch the bolts. You have to do that on a brand new set of head bolts, which is what we've got here. Feels really loose taking it off that much. I can imagine. So I said 180 degrees seems like so much. Should I say 18 degrees? <laughs> 180 degrees in reverse order of installation. Alright, we're going 31 foot pounds, tightening these back up in alphabetical sequence after doing our bolt stretching. Got to stretch your bolt hole just right. Stretch the bolts. You don't want to stretch the hole. <laughs> see. Got to get these German virgin tight, guten tight. <laughs> guten tight. And turning a wrench for a living is hard work. Ow. You gotta watch out for that. To the other side. Alright. Put a crown on this tooth. Let's put a crown on this tooth. Alright. And there is a EJ253 with a rotating assembly and Com heads on it. Complete long block assembly. Uh, most part. Eh, not complete long Almost. block. Almost. Alright, it's got the heads, it's got we the We still block. need cams and stuff, so. Oh, shut up. But I think we've hit a good ending place for tonight. <laughs>